You won't believe what Chinese scientists have unearthed on the moon. These shocking discoveries have astounded everyone and given us the answers to some of the biggest mysteries. China made an important step toward becoming a space power less than two years ago. What have they discovered, and what could it mean for the future of space exploration? The implications of these findings are immense, and they could reshape our understanding of the universe. Join us and witness the wonders awaiting us on our lunar journey. For a long time, it was believed that the moon was void of water altogether. Researchers and scientists have been performing more research to ascertain the actual state of the moon. The first evidence of water on the moon was discovered in 2009 when India's Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft carried with it NASA's moon mineralogy mapper instrument. Since the existence of lunar water has been proven, humans have been curious and working towards discovering more about lunar water. On November 23, 2020, a robotic spaceship, the Chang, a, a 5 probe, was sent to Oceanus Procellium, meaning an ocean of storms, which is a gigantic lunar mare that appears as a massive dark area from Earth, and it landed close to Mons Rumker. The probe, containing a sample collector with a drill and scoop and an ascent vehicle, immediately began collecting lunar samples when it landed on the moon on the 1st of December. It gathered 4.4 pounds of lunar material, some dug from up to 6.5 feet underground using the probe's drill. It launched to a waiting orbital module above the moon, which finally returned the materials to Earth by December 16th. The probe had to get all of this work done within two Earth weeks before the sun set on Mons Rumker because the probe is solar-powered. The material recovered from the moon was filled with glass beads called microtectites, also known as impact glasses or glass spherules, formed when meteors crash into the surface of an airless environment, blasting shards of lunar crust above the moon's surface. Inside these plumes, silicate minerals heated to extreme temperatures by the force of the impact combined to form the tiny glass beads sprinkled over the surroundings, a natural occurrence on the moon. This recovery shows that the moon still has water and goes beyond a few drops to thousands, as recent researchers and various telescopes documented. Due to the availability of water in the region, future expeditions in space can land researchers in these uncharted regions to serve as a water source for the space crew. The hydrogen present in these microtectites can also be used as a base material in producing rocket fuel. Most of the ice previously found was in the dark, poorly lit areas, but they have also been discovered in the sunlit parts, although there is no confirmed explanation for how they got there. The discovery of lunar water is cool, but how did it form under such conditions, and how can it be extracted? Some researchers from the Chinese Academy and two European counterparts, who have been aiming to study this phenomenon, published a paper claiming that this information sent by the Chang, a five probe can revolutionize our knowledge and help us better understand the origin of lunar water. They began their paper by citing that lunar exploration has detected substantial quantities of water on the moon's surface for the last two decades, confirming that water ice is trapped at the poles where there's almost constant shade, further agreeing with NASA's estimation in 2010 that the North Pole of the Moon's craters held around 600 million tons of ice. NASA was detecting a concentrated layer of these beads, and the researchers believe that over time the microtectites got buried under the top layers of lunar dust and slowly worked their way under the surface. Scientists discovered that the water trapped in the glass spherules was produced by the sun. The positively charged hydrogen atoms from a solar wind entered the glass beads and mixed with the oxygen inside them, forming water. According to an examination of hydrogen atoms present in them, they realized that, at high temperatures, the glass beads might release some of their hydrogen charges. This serves as a control for the moon's water cycle. It must be amazing to find out that the moon has renewable water. Sen Hu, a planetary geologist at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Institute of Geology and Geophysics, told Live Science in an email that water extraction is relatively easy. The glass beads are first collected, then boiled in an oven at a high temperature, the resulting water vapor is cooled, and liquid water is obtained in a bottle. The discovery of the water-filled glass spherolites brought about a lot of excitement but not enough to make China a strong contender in the space race. What else put them in the spotlight? Along with the discovery of water spherolites, another exciting discovery was recorded, a new and rare crystallized lunar mineral. It was found among the samples collected from the moon in 2020 and named Change Site Y. This phosphate columnar crystal was named after the Chinese moon goddess, Chang'e. Its discovery was accidental as it was found while the 3.81 pounds of lunar basalt particles collected were being examined in the laboratories.
While using X-ray diffraction at the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology to examine the samples collected, the researchers discovered a single crystal of the change site Y. It definitely was their lucky day because this made China the third country after the US and the former Soviet Union, which conducted the Apollo crew lunar landings and lunar sample return missions, respectively, to find a new lunar mineral. The sample discovered had the width of human hair, only 10 microns, and was developed around 1.2 billion years ago, which was the first lunar sample return mission since the 1970s. The rare lunar crystal was discovered on the moon's side in an area that experienced frequent volcanic activity. It is composed of a substance previously unknown to science and could one day supply unlimited energy. The lunar crystal possesses a crucial component for nuclear fusion, a clean method of producing energy that uses the same forces that power the sun and other stars, producing no greenhouse gases or long-lived radioactive waste. Change Site Y contains helium-3, an isotope of helium, which would serve life on Earth more directly. According to scientists, it will be a reliable fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors. Nuclear fusion joins two atomic nuclei together to create a more extensive and heavier nucleus under extreme heat and intense pressure. The element is rare on Earth but abundant on the Moon, measuring as much as 1.1 million metric tons in the first several meters of the Moon's surface. Although helium-3 has had the attention of scientists for a long time as a potential source of nuclear fusion fuel, humans still need to build a powerful enough fusion reactor to begin the process. Experts have also been unable to predict the cost of helium-3 as a fuel source, but it'll surely be quite expensive, and any predictions made would not be accurate as it is still too early for such. In years past, scientists and researchers have put in a lot of work to find another process to produce nuclear energy. The nuclear fission method generates more radiation and radioactive waste than the proposed nuclear fusion, expending more energy in reprocessing used nuclear fuel into uranium, plutonium, and other waste. The nuclear fission process, the process whereby the nucleus of an atom splits into two nuclei, releasing energy in the process, has a lot of safety issues, ranging from nuclear accidents to challenges in the disposal of its long-term radioactive byproduct. Nuclear fusion might be safer. The European Space Agency is optimistic about helium-3 because it generates less radiation and radioactive waste than other elements. If we identify the exact places where change site Y is most abundant on the moon and could mine it, just 25 tons of helium-3 is estimated to be enough to power the US for a year. What's more, this can be transported by the cargo bay of a single space shuttle. This puts the estimated value at about $3 billion per ton which can increase or decrease once it is widely discovered. It could even lead to full-blown competition between commercial enterprises and countries owning space agencies, already indicating their interest in mining helium-3 on the moon. Commenting on the high value of the helium-3, Aaron Olson, a NASA Space Technology Research Fellow, stated that of all the various volatile materials available on the moon, there is potentially only one that has significant value back on Earth. It could become a significant lunar export for power generation worldwide if used as fuel in a nuclear fusion reactor. To further cement China's position as a contender, a strangely colored gel-like substance was discovered by China's Chang, a for Luna rover in 2019 while investigating the moon's extreme angle. Upon discovering the strange substance, the goals and equipment of the rover U-22 used in the expedition were diverted toward identifying the strange substance. With the help of operators at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, the rover U-22 investigated the mysterious substance, approaching the crater using its obstacle avoidance cameras to target the strangely colored substance. They could not deduce the substance, but scientists and researchers put forth a hypothesis to explain the situation. They stated that the substance could be molten glass produced by meteorites impacting the moon's surface. Subscribe to Giant Post and see you in the next episode.